Hi, it's Katrina. From strange carvings with faces that look like they're melting to a mask over 2,000 years old, here are 10 amazing recent archaeological finds. Number 10. Dazu Rock Carvings the Dazu area in Shanqing, China is famous for its many incredibly detailed rock carvings. Dating back from the 9th to the 13th centuries, they are known for their aesthetic quality and variety of scenes depicting everyday life for people during this time period. Incredibly, they are very well preserved with few broken areas and coloring that still remains. There are 102 cliffside sculptures and rock carvings in the county, and some of them are enormous. Some of the most mysterious are two statues with very strange faces. It turns out that they are mythical figures dressed as generals, clairvoyants, and clairaudience. In early 2017, Li Xiaoqiang, head researcher, confirmed that two six-foot-tall statues represent the abilities to send and receive psychic messages and correspondence to and from spirits. The clairvoyant statue depicts a character who can see thousands of miles away, represented with large eyes and ribbons floating from his head. Clairaudience can hear thousands of miles away. The statues, which also represent two mythological generals of the Jade Emperor, date back to 1147, during the Southern Song Dynasty. Both are scantily clad, showing off their toned physiques, while each displays characteristics exemplifying his strongest qualities. The characters each hold an unidentified object. In the case of clairvoyance, people seem to believe that the item in question is an ancient telescope, while many theorize that clairaudience possesses either a snake or a telephone receiver that he uses to hear his far-flung audience. Researchers are hesitant to officially identify the items because they admittedly aren't sure what the objects are. While both characters have existed for quite some time, statues of them are rare, Lee told China Daily. Experts will continue studying the pair in hopes of learning more about them and their role in China's past. Number 9. Lost Monastery While excavating King's Square in the city of Gloucester, England as part of its redevelopment, archaeologists recently discovered the location of a long-lost 13th-century Carmelite friary. The team, headed by Gloucester City Council and Cotswold Archaeology, found the facility's remains amongst the wreckage of a demolished parking garage bringing an end to an age-old mystery regarding where the White Friars had their headquarters. They were members of the Order of Carmelites, but all information of their location there had been lost. The historical record contained evidence that the establishment was somewhere in the area, but for years, its exact location eluded historians and other experts. So far, experts have uncovered the remnants of at least four large buildings that were either made from stone or with stone footings, a medieval drain, and the remains of tiled and mortared floors. For around 300 years, White Friars played an active part in Gloucester and produced some notable friars, city archaeologist Andrew Armstrong told Express. Seeing and documenting this site will serve to underline and recognize the place of friary in the city's history. Friars were similar to monks when it came to their dedication to prayer and learning, but unlike monks, friars actively engaged with the outside world and performed community service. Among the most noteworthy members of the Order of Carmelites was Nicholas Cantilo, or Cantaloupe, a historian and master of theology of noble background who lived during the 15th century. Number 8. Ancient Tablet Experts recently dated a coarse cylindrical stone artifact containing a Greek inscription all the way back to 165 BC, before Jesus was born. The object, which archaeologists discovered in March in the Duhok region of Iraq, contains Hellenistic script, connecting it to the historical period following Alexander the Great's death in 323 BC. Researchers who translated the inscription to Kurdish discovered that it mentions Demetrius, a 2nd century BC king of Macedon who ruled over the region. Many ancient artifacts of seemingly Greek origins have been discovered throughout Asia and the Middle East, but to Duhak Museum director Hassan Ahmed, who announced the fascinating find, as well as other experts, the tablet's discovery is major, not only for its historical value, but because it potentially opens up possibilities for further excavations in the Kurdistan region. Just days before Ahmed released a statement about the Hellenistic tablet, the Kurdistan Region Ministry of Municipalities and Tourism announced the discovery of multiple archaeological sites in Erbil province. 
Number 7. Tablet Linked to Noah's Ark Noah's Ark from the Book of Genesis tells of a devout man who survived apocalyptic worldwide flooding by building a wooden boat called an ark at God's instruction. Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their sons' wives were the only humans to survive the flood, their lives spared thanks to their loyalty to God in a corrupted and evil world. When the flood was over, the ark came to rest upon the mountains of Ararat. Evidence of the ark is very faint, which isn't a problem for those who don't believe the story in the first place, but many do, including plenty of archaeologists, some who theorize that Ararat is a dormant volcano in Turkey. One of them is Tom Meyer, a Bible studies professor at Shasta Bible College in California. Meyer believes there are numerous clues indicating that Noah's Ark is a factual story and which could help find the vessel's remains. He explained his views in an interview with Express Media, first pointing out that there are numerous historical accounts of catastrophic flooding that at least resemble the biblical story of the flood Noah and his family endured, with the secular versions landing the Ark in various places. Meyer further stated, A recent cracking of an ancient puzzle by Irving Finkel, the assistant keeper of ancient Mesopotamian languages at the British Museum, collaborates the Bible's record of the Ark landing on Mount Ararat. The ancient puzzle in question is the Simmons Ark Tablet, a 3,700-year-old Babylonian cuneiform tablet that describes the ancient Babylonian story of the Flood. It's incredibly similar to the story of Noah's Ark, despite allegedly being about a different event. Within its 60 lines of cuneiform, Dr. Irving found text indicating where the Babylonians thought the Ark was, which he claims refers to the region of eastern Turkey where Mount Ararat is located. Religion can be a sensitive topic when it comes to archaeology, as this example proves. While some archaeologists write off Dr. Irving's claims as scientifically unsupported poppycock, others find them completely credible, despite a conspicuous lack of physical evidence. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. We have lots of videos coming up! Number 6. Turfan Balls A recent study describes the discovery of three leather balls in the prehistoric Yanghai Cemetery in northwestern China serving as the oldest known evidence of ball games in Eurasia. The trio of artifacts were radiocarbon dated to sometime between 1189 and 911 BC, predating other known evidence of ball games by several centuries. This makes these balls about 500 years older than the previous known ancient balls and depictions of ball games in Eurasia, said study author and archaeologist Dr. Patrick Wortman. Two of the balls were found in tombs possibly belonging to horse riders and it is believed that the artifacts date back to a time when horseback riding first spread throughout the region. For the team, identifying the balls was only half the battle. They admittedly still haven't figured out which ball game the objects were used for, although in their words, their use in team and goal sport is likely, hockey perhaps. But this suspicion cannot be confirmed, especially since no accessories of the same age such as sticks have been found. Number 5. Ritual Bath during a routine excavation in anticipation of road construction in Israel's Lower Galilee region, workers and volunteers under the supervision of the Israeli Antiquities Authority, or IAA, found a 2,000-year-old mikvah, or ritual bath. In Judaism, mikvahs are used for ritualistic purification purposes. The recently discovered 57-ton bath offers new insight into Jewish life in Roman-ruled Palestine during the Second Temple period, which lasted from 597 BC to 70 AD. It was previously unknown that the residents of the ancient farmstead where the mikvah was found, or in Galilee in general, were Jewish. Additionally, as IAA archaeologist Dr. Abd El Ghani Ibrahim and Dr. Walid Atrash pointed out, the discovery shows that the people who lived there were devoted to maintaining a traditional religious lifestyle and staying pure. It was considered that the Jews in the Roman period didn't live in farms outside the villages or towns, the experts explained. Around 1,700 years ago, a massive earthquake destroyed the farm, and 300 years later, it was abandoned for good. A crowdfunding campaign paid for the careful removal of the mikvah from the bedrock and its relocation next to a modern mikvah in Kibbutz Hanaton. Number 4. Iron Age Massacre Between the 15th century BC and the 3rd century BC, the town of La Jolla in what is now northern Spain was bustling. The prehistoric settlement reached a peak population of around 1,500 residents, but at some point, 
it ceased to exist completely. La Hoya was rediscovered in 1935 and partially excavated between 1973 and 1990. During that time, archaeologists discovered the burned skeletons of at least 13 people in the streets and inside buildings. This year, a team of researchers and archaeologists performed the first detailed analysis of the human remains. Their findings, detailed in the journal Antiquity, indicate that the attackers targeted their victims when they least expected it. There were no weapons near the individuals, who the researchers believe were viciously murdered while unarmed at a public event. Moreover, the invaders did not appear to take any goods, implying that they were politically rather than economically motivated. Included among the remains are a beheaded adult male, bones containing stab marks, and a teenage girl with her arm cut off. The brutality predates the Roman conquest of the region, leading researchers to believe that the carnage may have occurred between two Iberian rivals. Based on the condition La Hoya was left in, including the lack of proper burials, it's likely that any survivors picked up and moved elsewhere. Number 3. Animals Buried Alive Human and animal sacrifices were customary among certain ancient Mesoamerican civilizations, including the Inca. When they wanted to appease the gods, the Inca often sacrificed llamas, a prized asset that provided the civilization with food and clothing. So when archaeologists recently found the well-preserved remains of five llamas at a Peruvian site called Tambo Viejo, the discovery was exciting, but not necessarily surprising. At least, not at first. But the remains are teaching experts more about the Inca's sacrificial customs. Based on radiocarbon dating, the animals were buried between 1432 and 1459, before the arrival of Spanish conquistadores. Nearby were large ovens and evidence of feasts, indicating that the sacrifices happened during celebrations. Dr. Lido Valdez from the University of Calgary explained, the offerings likely were part of much larger feasts and gatherings sponsored by the state. The state befriended the local people with food and drink, cementing political alliances whilst placing offerings allowed the Inca to claim the land as theirs. In other words, these practices were meant to appease recently conquered societies. As part of the ritual, the Inca decorated the llamas with jewelry and likely buried them alive, as evidenced by their feet being tied together, a measure that would have prevented them from moving around too much during the process. Dr. Valdez admitted that he had no way to prove that the llamas were buried alive, but he nevertheless thinks that that's what happened. Inca used to sacrifice children, and it is said some of the children were buried alive, he told the new scientist. If they did that with children, I'm sure they would have done the same thing with llamas. Number 2. 2,400-year-old mask in September of this year, the Turkish state-run news company Andalo Agency reported the discovery of a 2,400-year-old terracotta mask depicting the ancient Greek god Dionysus in the Acropolis of the ancient city of Daskalion. Archaeologist Khan Iren, who led the team that made the exciting find, told the press that the artifact may have been a votive mask, adding that it was likely used during winemaking rituals. According to legend, wearing a mask depicting Dionysus, the god of carnivals and masquerades, freed someone from hidden regrets and desires. Excavations at Daskileon are 32 years old, and this is the first time that we have unearthed a mask which is nearly intact, Iren said, conveying the remarkable nature of the discovery. The mask likely dates back to the end of the 4th century BC and is one of numerous intriguing artifacts that have been excavated at Daskileon a historically multicultural city that served as an administrative center for the Persian Empire before Hellenistic influence began taking over in 334 BC. Number 1. Los Sapos Sweat Bath Sweat baths, also called sweat lodges, were a common part of Mesoamerican cultures who used them for both spiritual and health-related purposes. This year, scientists working at the Shultun archaeological site in Guatemala unearthed numerous bones and tools at what's called Los Sapos Sweat Bath. The study, led by archaeologists from the Smithsonian Tropical Institute and Boston University, claims that the Maya viewed sweat baths as embodiments of relatives, ancestors, and supernatural beings. Dating back to sometime between 250 and 550 AD, during the early Classic period, the Los Sapos sweat bath is ornately decorated, bearing the image of a squatting female deity with legs featuring iguanas and cane toads. No other structure in Mesoamerica, sweat bath or otherwise, looks like this building, said Steady co-author and STRI archaeologist Ashley Sharp. 
It would seem that when someone enters the front of the structure, they are entering the amphibian goddess who personified the sweat bath. The team believes that the sweat bath was used for roughly 300 years before a deceased adult was buried there around 600 AD. Another three centuries later, the person's remains were removed and replaced with the remains of a child and various animals, including a puppy, birds, toads, and iguanas. The combination of remains was likely a dedication to the sweat bath as a place of birth and creation and reflective of a population that was trying to ensure its survival by appeasing the goddess. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn more about recent archaeological discoveries or some of your favorites, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!